Hi there, Bjork Finn from Audio Issues here, author of Step by Step Mixing, here with another mix video helping you to confidently finish your mixes so you can be proud to release your records. As always, please like and subscribe. And if you haven't yet, please go to mixfinisher.com to download your seven step mix translation cheat sheet so you can get. Uh, your mixes and your songs sounding great on every speaker that you play them through. Super important stuff right there. Today we're going to look at some jazz uh, from John Martin. His song, Engel and Heart, I mixed uh, live for my customers today. And I wanted to show you a few tricks or a few things that uh, I thought were interesting during that time. So first of all, uh, if you have a mix template, which I recommend... You don't always need to use every single thing in your mix template because sometimes you get songs that are just so simple that you only need to do some light uh, touching up of the tracks. Maybe they're really well recorded and really well performed and all you have to do is create a vibe, create a space, add some depth, glue things together, uh, create some separation between the instruments. You don't have to go into hardcore troubleshooting mode or try to use every single reverb or, <laughs> or all of your stuff. So just be cognizant of when, you've, when you start mixing just to experiment, which is good. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, not, I, I do recommend experimentation, but if you're just trying to do things because you don't know what to do next, maybe it's time to take a break. Uh, so don't think that the mix template that is designed for a 24-track a uh, hard rock uh, song is necessarily something that you should use all of when you get a cool little vibey jazz tune like this. So I wanted to touch on one specific trick that helped me create separation between the bass and the piano. So in this song, we just have a jazz trio. That means that there's only drums, there's a upright bass, and there's a piano. So there's plenty of room uh, all you have to do is create some space, uh, make sure that everything is sort of level and, and, and every, you can hear everything. However, you will often run into some uh, conflicting clashes in the low mids, especially when you have a full range 88 key piano and, and, uh, and a bass. So what I did here and what I'm going to focus on today is just this one little trick that is just... I side-chained the low mids between about 100 and 290 or so. And it side-chained to the bass so that the only time they were really clashing was when the piano and the bass were sort of playing in the same register. So when the piano started playing in, in the lower register maybe, hitting the lower keys... It was conflicting with the bass guitar at that point, and I didn't want to do too much carving in the EQ spectrum and the frequency spectrum. So what I did was I added a multiband or a compressor that's just compressing here, but it's listening to the bass guitar so that whenever the bass guitar is, is playing, it's actually compressing the piano down here just slightly. And I'm just going to give you a quick example of what that sounds like here. All right, so in this spot right here, they um, they're playing sort of this this you know part together, and I thought that it needed a little cleanup. Uh, actually, I got some help from from one of the uh, viewers that was watching me do this live, and he said that well, if they're playing in the same register, which is actually something that happens a lot, if you uh, and this can actually be solved in the arrangement phase of your of your production because if you keep dialing or keep loading a bunch of instruments that are all playing in the same register, you're just going to end up with a lot of mud in the low mids. So sometimes you need to decide what instruments should maybe play an octave higher or an octave lower or not just everything in the same place there. 
you'll, you're, you're going to get inevitable build up there and you're going to have to carve out a lot of frequencies in order for everything to fit together if they're all in the same place uh, in the frequency spectrum. But this is a simple way to, to sort of get rid of that uh, and help, help those two instruments play together. So let's see if we can solo it. And I'm going to deactivate this, and you're going to hear just a little bit about a little bit how there's just a little clutter in the low mid, sort of like, sort of like, kind of like that, this sort of feeling, right? So not terrible, obviously, it's still like you can hear everything pretty well. But when I engage this compressor, it sort of cleans up and gives the bass the, this sort of pocket to live in. So let's hear that. So this is obviously a slight EQ cut here too, but it is not cutting a lot and then it just gives you that tiny little pocket for them to live together. And that's just one way to create separation between the instruments like that. And then if you add in the drums just for fun, um, it's, uh, it's a pretty groovy track. Subtle, but less boomy uh, regardless. So that's sort of what I got this week. A really great way to find where your instruments are clashing is to simply take your EQ and just listen to both instruments at the same time and then push one of, one of the, the instrument that you think is clashing too much with something else. You just push it all the way up and you sweep around until that instrument is completely clouding the other track and that's when you know that that's the frequency that they're both fighting over so i did it with multi-band compression more more so than anything than just standard eq this time around but consider two of these tricks whenever you're trying to create cleaner and clearer mixes in the low mids and separation between your instruments wherever they are clashing all right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, I am Bjorkman Bendixson from Audio Issues, author of Step by Step Mixing. And as always, use your ears.